Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris White Africa. This is Chris in Central Pennsylvania with a post-mortem analysis of some key points and key takeaways from South Africa's 2021 municipal elections. Well, first off, the ANC got exactly what I predicted, but not nearly to the degree that I'd hoped for. They have been pulled below 50% of the voting nationwide in the 2020 municipal elections. But hey, that really doesn't matter. The vote that you get across the nation really isn't germane, other than from a moral victory for opposition parties wanting to drag the ANC down. EFF, DA, and others. Success. They finished at 46% of the vote with all the votes counted in South Africa. Now 100% of precincts reporting in and the IEC claiming it was a free and fair election. Well, <laughs> some people would disagree with that and there was a number of irregularities. But the ANC gets 46%. They get allocated 4,549 seats on municipality and metro councils. That is a significant drop from over 5,000 they had in 2016. Meanwhile, the Democratic Alliance has also had a disappointing showing despite having some success in a few places they've never had sex before, like the KZN area with the Umgeni municipality, which includes Peter Maritzburg and Howick. The DA got 21.84% of the vote, 1,494 seats. The Economic Freedom Fighters, the third largest party, gained a couple of points to jump up to just over 10. I predicted they'd finish around 10, a little bit higher than my expectations, but unfortunately they picked up more council seats. They jumped from 757 or thereabouts to 982. Pretty significant jump, coming with 2.4 million votes, nearly half those that the DA got. So that's the top three parties. But the real story here in this election, other than the ANC being dragged down to 46%, is they really were beaten in Hauteng, where they got just over 30, let's see, was it 36% in Hauteng? And then in KZN, where they were dropped below 50%, that's KwaZulu Natal to 41%. That is incredibly significant that the ANC failed to achieve 50% in KwaZulu Natal, which they've ruled with an iron fist for ages, and in Halteng, where they got just 36% of the vote. Unfortunately, the Democratic Alliance didn't quite step up and wound up with just 29% of the vote. The EFF with about 12% of the vote. Interesting in Halteng. So those are the stories about the ANC. But the other story here, other than the DA not taking control of Shwane, dropping their visit presented the vote there in Schwanning and also dropping at Nelson Mandela Bay is that the performance of a few smaller parties like the former very impressive Inkata Freedom Party which has lost ground year after year and now has regained that. They are stomping on the ANC in the, in the KZN province winning outright nine municipalities and leading in 16. So 5.7% of the vote nationally, but nationally doesn't matter. It's what happens in KZN because it's a regionally based party for the most part. And there the ANC has just 41% of the vote, 742 seats in municipalities. And the IFP got 527 seats, the DA with 165. That's another story. And then and two more really big stories here. Action SA, Herman Mashaba's party pulled in a significant amount of the vote in Hauteng, but they didn't get any wards nonetheless because they got... 16% of the vote, they managed, and that's Johannesburg, they got more than that in the province, they managed to get a total of 90 seats, 90 seats, Action SA is 90 seats, and here's the real story, folks, this is the big gainer, this is the one that's off the charts impressive, the Free to Front Plus, which had 67 seats after the 2016 elections, scored 221 seats, unbelievable. Even distribution across the country, they did particularly well everywhere, but especially well in Haltang where they took 53 seats. And then the, the worst performance they had, which is not worse, is actually Gaines was Eastern Cape of six vote, six seats, KZN and five seats, but everywhere else they had double digits. And Western Cape 34, Northwest 34, Free State 34, very impressive performance, very even performance. They will be kingmakers in Shwane potentially and also in some hung municipalities in the Western Cape where they also did well. Very great performance by the Freedom Front Plus. Very impressive on their part. And so there you have it, folks. Just a quick little rundown of what's happening. The real story here in this election is the ANC got pummeled, mostly by voters staying away and not coming to the polls. They lost easily a million votes that they should have gotten from people just not coming in, frustrated with their lack of service to their constant empty promises and lies. Yet they're completely ignoring. Sir Ronald Pose acts as if they've had some big win and that they're going to be accountable now. They haven't been accountable for 27 years. What's going to change that tomorrow? Not this. They would have had to have been given a 35% share of the vote and lost half the municipalities before they woke up. They haven't woken up. Despite the fact they've been pummeled, they lost over 500 ward seats, ward and council seats in the country. 
that should have been a very clear message to the NCAA. But once again, they're not bright enough to figure it out. The EFF has done a little bit of gaining in seats, but they've not gained any municipality control, and they've actually not done particularly well in places where they've done well in the past. The big winners here are Freedom Front Plus and the Action SA. The Patriotic Alliance also gained 75 seats, mostly in the Western Cape, and the UDM had a less than an impressive performance at 51 seats and just 0.48% of the vote. Other parties gained 624 votes in total. That included a small party called ACC, Action Community Committee or something like that, which seemed to be Indian-based in Durban. They got two seats. We met a couple of their folks running for office on Sunday when Caro Charo turned up on my channel and introduced me to two of them, including a young man, young man named Zane and another named Julian. Don't know if they won, but they picked up two seats for that party in Durban. Congratulations to them. And Neil De Beers, upstart party, the UIM, United Independent Movement, which just formed about 60 days before the election, barely got under the wire to be qualified to be a political party, raised candidates all over the country in a very short vetting process, which was a challenge for them. And they managed to score over 30,000 votes. Doesn't sound impressive, but they got four seats, two in Hauteng, one Joburg, one Chwane, and two seats, one, two more, one in KZN and one in the Western Cape. Actually, you know, we talked about this. Winning any seat would be impressive given how short a time frame they had, and they won four seats. So well done on their part. Congratulations. It is an interesting election. Lots of people say lots of things can be drawn from this, that the ANC's hegemony is gone. Don't count on that despite the fact they even almost came below 50% in Bloemfontein and in the Free State. Not over yet. The failure of the Democratic Alliance to seize on this. Folks, think about this. This is the easiest election in the history of the world. The ANC has screwed up everything. They've got people being exposed for fraud and corruption every single day. Senior members of the party. The murder of Babita Deo Karan, the whistleblower over the PPE scandal in the government. The assassination of Babita Deo Karan. Say her name, Babita Deo Karan. Do not forget this woman was murdered. And according to the Hawks, high-ranking ANC official involved. Yet to disclose who that is. Wait for that one to come out. Despite that, despite the fact no cook, no cooked chicken sales, no open-toed shoes, no going on beaches, no this, no that, complete imprisonment of the population and criminalization of lawful behavior. Over 400,000 South Africans now charged with crimes for doing lawful behavior because this moronic government doesn't know how to follow science and do the correct thing. And just one stumble after another, ANC, corruption. Zandili Gumeda, a corrupt official with dozens of corruption charged against her, is surreptitiously appointed to the KZN KwaZulu-Natal Provincial Legislature. Seriously? An uproar from the public. She gets suspended with pay. The list goes on and on and on. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, Chris White, I want you to tune in and catch the latest and greatest in updates about what's happening across the continent of Africa with a special focus on Southern Africa and an especially important focus on South Africa. This is an update on the situation after all the results, results have been reported for the 2021 Municipal Election in South Africa. The only winners here, the Nkata Freedom Party in KZN province, the Freedom Front Press across the country and potentially in Shwane and also a few municipalities in the Western Cape where there'll be kingmakers potentially and perhaps the PA. But that's about it, folks. The Patriotic Alliance, no one else is a clear winner here. The ANC has suffered grievous losses. The DA has suffered losses and failed to capitalize on the ineptitude of the African National Congress. Folks, that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks a lot. Take care of yourselves and God bless you and please pray for South Africa. They could use it.